up guys, Tim Little here with Tackle Bassin. Uh, we're out here at Lake Fort with the Shimano. Um, Shimano crew, Shimano boys came out and uh, let us play with a lot of their new gear, some stuff that's gonna be rela released at iCast. But man, I got to spend the day on the water with uh, Mr. Lake Fork himself, Keith Combs, cranking. Lake Fork doesn't get much better than that. So um, real quick, uh, we spent the day mainly throwing 6XDs and 10XDs. Uh, I switched between uh, the high-end Shimano stuff this is the uh, a Terrace. Uh, it's phenomenal reel. It it's is. it's it's the Ferrari of of, of bait casting reels, and it makes throwing that 10XT uh, effortless. It, it's it's definitely definitely a great reel if you can afford the price point. Um, but man, I was actually really impressed with the, one of the new reels they got. It's the Casitas. It's uh, I believe it's going to be retail for like 119 or something. Right around 100 bucks. That's a good deal. 100 bucks and. Uh, fish this most of the day and we, we, we caught some good fish oh yeah it handled um, well but uh more importantly man lake fork crankbaiting i want to let mr combs explain what he does i learned so much just sitting back and watching him um but i'm let him break down his tools of his trade and uh, we can all learn something well basically i mean we're here uh just after a major major tournament you know the uh skeeter owners tournament just went on had over 2400 entrants this year so Lake Fork is beat up. I mean, right. the schools, you know, you saw them, they're not real big schools. They're, they're pretty broken up out there right now. But uh, we managed to catch, you know, we fished this evening, probably had about 10 or 11 fish, you know, upper 20s on our best five. So it was a good day, you know. Uh, the main thing out there right now is uh, you, you have a lot of various types of fish relating to the same types of structure. You know, the main lake points have schools of whites, they have schools of uh, big schools of gizzard shad out there on them and schools of bass. So, you know, we spent a lot of time trying to break down and distinguish from what was what. So, we spent a lot of time on the uh, hummingbird onyx today and, uh, you know, that, that paid off big. We found two good schools of fish and, and both of them, you know, gave us quality bites. Uh, as far as baits, you know, we stuck with the 6 and the 10XD. Those are really my mainstays for cranking. Uh, I use, I'm starting to use the 8XD a lot more around brush and things like that but I mean my old standby right here I mean almost everywhere I go that same color chartreuse and blue 6xd I threw it on a Shimano Corrado and uh, that's what I threw the 10xd on also are you are you th you're throwing on the 200 size you're not throwing on the new 70s that's correct no I'm throwing on the 200 size uh, wide spool wide spool that's a necessity I like the fast drill 7 2 to 1 I mean I can slow it down if I need to if I want to burn it I can't and more importantly you know if I got a big fish out there and he's hooked up and he's jumping I want to be in control. That high gear ratio reel lets me do that. So it just gives me more options when I go to that fast reel. Yeah, I was, I was almost watching an artist work. You know, you pull up on a point and uh, I'll let him get into that a little bit more on the electronic side. But, you know, he had the two, he had the 6XD and the 10XD and based on whatever depth we were hitting at or whatever the schools he would find, it was like, dude, he was just working. It was, it was pretty impressive to watch. Um, let's talk about one thing that I noticed. The big, one of the biggest things I learned today, um, we moved around quite a bit. And a lot of guys, you know, they, they'll find schools and they, they sit around and they wait for that school to turn on. Uh, not this guy. This guy's going around and running, looking for active fish. So why don't you elaborate on that? Well, I mean, really, the, that, that's the way I like to do it. If I can move, if, if there's not a boat on every single piece of good structure out there, I want to move around and catch a school when it's aggressive. You know, and if I'm not catching them fast, I want to be moving on to the next one. You know, you can look around, uh, and even in a tournament situation, it's okay to spend an hour or even two hours on your graph because those kind of fish out there, you don't have to grind for them. When you find them, you can catch, like we did today, 20 five, Yeah, pounds. five casts, five fish. Yeah, for, I mean, over 20 pounds. Right. So, you know, that that's my style. Uh, I would much rather sit behind that wheel and let that uh, onyx do the work for me. But uh, it's uh, it's fast-paced when it's good. It's a lot of graphing, so it requires a lot of patience. But uh, you know, it pays off when it's, when it's good. Right, no, it, he's, it was absolutely, today, you know, we'd, we'd, he'd idle around a long time behind the graph and he'd find the schools, he'd mark the schools, and, and he, he knows the graph, he knows that they're active, the way they're setting up, if they're feeding or not. And uh, we just bounce between those points and, and spots, and, and whenever you'd pull up to a spot where they're feeding, like, like we said, five casts, five fish, you know, one was seven pounds, a yeah. couple five pounders, um, and uh, it was definitely an eye opener to, you know, not sit around and wait for the fish to turn on, but to you go find those active fish. But anyways, man, it was a hell of a day, hell of a day. I had a lot of fun, learned a lot, got to play around some of the Shimano reels. Um, lake for you guys, come down Texas. It's an awesome lake, great fishery. Uh, man, Keith, I learned a lot. I really appreciate it.
been a great day. I enjoyed it. All right. Let's do it again. Yeah, for sure. Come on out. Come on out west. We'll go Clear Lake, the Delta, and, and have some fun. I want to catch one of those true giants. Or one of the big spots. Oh, yeah, there you go. One of the big spots. There you go. All right, guys. We'll talk to you soon. That's the head that I'm throwing. Um, a little bit about that head and why we decided to go that route and actually build a head instead of using something that was already out there. Um, Real. I throw braid to a leader, and when I hit grass, I'm, I'm popping it. And when this, it's, it's like dragging something by a, a cat. They're not looking at the bait. When that thing rips through the grass and that thing pops up, the fish, it's just an instinct. They eat it. So I don't think they care about seeing the braid. <laughs> I think that it's just something that triggers in their head. They're reacting. You're getting that bite. When you when you hit that grass and you pop that rod, when you use that braid, you have there's no give. So you can rip that through the through the grass and That's get fair. those get those reaction bites. So uh, stick to your floral and I'll stick to my braid. But uh, square billing, man, it, it's it's a lot of fun, um, especially when the fish move up shallow and the tulies in the grass. It's a, it's a great way to uh, catch a lot of fish, catch some big fish. So. Um